It's Kum Cassius, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm joined by Chris Eubank Jr. Chris, um, yeah, made your return tonight, fighting back in the UK. Is it fair to say that Marcus Morrison kind of gave you a better fight than what you expected? Um, I didn't know what to expect. I don't know much about the guy. Um, I just knew he was big and strong and, uh, and, and light-skinned, so he probably gets a lot of girls like me. Uh, it's a joke. Uh, um, uh, but yeah, you know, very, very um, solid guy. I knew he was a solid guy. I didn't know he'd be that tough. You know, I had him hurt bad in the second round and I stepped off because I didn't, I didn't want the fight to end quickly. You know, I, I felt like I could have taken him out, but I let him recoup. And, um, you know, I wanted to get the rounds and I wanted to experience what it was like to have, you know, the instructions of Roy Jones each and every round uh, for the first time. And I, I wanted to get some of that ring rust off, you know. I've, it's been two years since I've had a real fight. It's crazy, so. Uh, Roy, can we bring you into this interview as well? Sorry. Roy, um, what was your uh, assessment of Chris's performance tonight? I thought Chris did an awesome job. Um, he started out early, he went, he showed a little bit of the old Chris that he was, that he always going to be. Um, he had discipline tonight to back up and say, okay, let me get some rounds in though, because he could have took him out. And we all, we both knew that. And I told him before, he didn't really need Roy Jones to train him to beat Marcus Morris, I didn't think. But I would like to see him do some of the things that me and him have been working on for this off time. And I saw him do so much of it tonight to, I'm really, I'm just, I'm, I can't even explain the gratitude of me just seeing him go out there and put the things that we've been working on to work. So I love that. Roy, right, Chris was talking about, which is obvious to everyone, there would be a little bit of ring rust there because of his, he hasn't been in the ring for a little while. So how much of that played a part into tonight as well? I don't think the ring rust played a big part. I mean, I know he had to be a little bit off because he hasn't fought in two years. And when the last time he fought, I think he went two rounds. So, I mean, he ain't fought in a long time. But later on in the fight, when you start to see a jab popping the head back, you know he's doing something because that, that takes time. And for him to be able to go there and boom and boom and win that jab, boom, 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 I, I, I really never seen him do that before. So it's like that shocked me. He may have, but I just didn't see it. But that shocked me because that lets me know that now he's getting that timing back. Chris, we know you over the years, you're very overcritical of yourself. So if you're going to be overcritical of yourself, what were you disappointed about tonight in particular? Um, I can't say I was disappointed. Um, maybe, maybe got caught with, or, you know, not caught, but you know, hit with a couple of shots, a few too many. I've got a couple of little marks on me. And again, I'm light-skinned, so they're sharp a lot more than everybody else. Um, you know, very tough kid. Um, you know, the stamina was good. Um, you know, I actually took a year off doing cardio um, while I was training with Rook, because I wanted all my energy in his gym. You know what I mean? So that probably had a little bit to play in it. You know, I, did, I felt like there could have been maybe a little bit more energy. Um, but at the same time, you know, I felt like I was, you know, I was solid. You know, I, I, I had a lot of energy and bur energy burst with each round. Um, and again, I, you know, I hurt him early and I kind of backed off. And you know, that's, that's probably the reason why it went 12 rounds. I mean, uh, 10 rounds. Um, there's always room for improvement. You know, this is my first fight with Roy. So there's always going to be, you know, little teething, little teething issues, but we're going to get there and we're going we're gonna to do some massive things this year. So let's talk about what's next. Is it a case of who's next, or do you feel like you possibly may need a similar fight to what you had tonight before one of those kind of big names which we know you're desperate for? No, I mean, you know, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm back at it now. So, you know, a big name in the summer is what we're looking for. Um, you know, I'm not a 10 round fighter, I'm a, I'm a 12 round, you know, world level elite fighter. So I need to fight these big names. I'm 31 years old. Um, you've got to strike when iron's hot. I'm not getting any younger, so uh, big names and titles is what we want. Yeah, echo those thoughts. Big names, titles next. Yes, I think so. He's a 12-round warrior is what he is, so I mean, he can go to war with anybody in the time. And now he's learned to box with that warrior, warrior mentality. So, I mean, he can go anywhere, in the time with anybody. Whoever want it, he know it. They ready, he ready for it. Whoever want it, they can get it, baby. I know I'm you wanted about, to say it. That's exactly what I want to say. <laughs> All Whoever day. Whoever can get it. All day and twice on a Sunday. Chris, we know you want to target a fight with Gennady Golovkin, but we don't know how realistic that is, not because you don't want him, just because we don't know in terms of what he's doing next, etc. So, Golovkin aside, what, I mean, who are we looking at now? So I'm WBA interim world champion, so Roy Morata has the belt that I'm in line for. 
that fight really needs to be made, really. I'm, I'm number one contender. Um, would love that fight. Eddie wants me to fight Kel Brook. You know, if you guys want, if you guys want me to get in the ring with him and, and beat him up for 12 rounds, I'd be happy to do that. It's a fun fight. Uh, people keep bringing up this Liam Williams guy. Um, you know, he did 12 solid rounds with Andrade. The list is endless. Charlo, the, the, you know, there's so many, there's so many big names out there. It's just up for my promoters to uh, to put them in front of me. Do you have a pick of who you'd like to see Christian with next? Me? Yeah, yeah. Myself, I think the Kell Brook fight would be a good fight for us because he's over here in this country. Uh, Kell Brook has a big name. Kell Brook is a big guy. You know, he's a very muscular guy. He's a smart guy. So we'll have to do some thinking. We'll have to do some thinking to deal with a Kell Brook, and I think that would be a perfect fight for Chris right now. And you guys are not promoters. Stand behind Roy. So Kella, come in and stand behind Roy a sec. Um, Talk about Golovkin. What company, first of all? What, what company? <laughs> I mean, what company? You Thank know? you, brother. Thank you. A, 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 a living legend, a future legend. You know, what can I say? Thank you, brother. And Coot and Cassius. You know? <laughs> <laughs> clearly, clearly, clearly. <laughs> um, we know he wants Golovkin. We know that. Um, but realistically, next... Canelo, Golovkin. I know his Christmas list. I'm at it. You know, he called me Father Christmas. I will deliver. You know, no, those are the big fights. I mean, those are the fights you want to be fighting in. He wants to rule the middleweights. We all know the last 10 years of middleweight has belonged to Golovkin. Absolute logical fight. We had some discussions with his broadcaster in, in, uh, in January. It's a fight they won. I mean, it's Golovkin called him out before his last fight. I can't remember if someone else and, and, and Junior was mentioned by Golovkin himself. So yeah, he, he wants it. You need, you need two to tango in boxing. So I think it's fantastic, you know. Um, but let's let's go get a deal done. <laughs> Roy has just said next he'd like or he likes the fight with Kell Brook and, and if you can't get Golovkin, the Kell Brook fight, which the UK fans would absolutely love that fight. They'd love the fight with Liam Williams as well, but Kell Brook, those kind of guys to the UK public would lap that up. Listen, I've I, I just said so. You've got Golovkin, you've got Canelo, you've got Billy Joe, you've got um, Murata, you've got Andrade, you've got uh, Kell Brook, you got... I heard someone mention Amir Khan the other day. I don't know what weight these people are walking around at. Thoughts? You know? Chris? No, I, I don't isn't, know. isn't he too busy on a reality TV show no, 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 with no, his no. wife? He doesn't want to smoke. Leave Amir alone. <laughs> I'm not going to comment. I like Amir. But, but I don't... Listen, I, at the end of the day... There's so many big fights to make, and but to make big, big fights, you don't just need good boxers, you need star appeal. And the man on the right of me has both. The man on the left of me is a living legend. <laughs> you know? So we have everything. You know, now it's about going out and getting it done. There's lots of lots of interest, and um, it's gonna be an exciting time now. Very, very exciting. Okay, just finally, before I let you go, um, obviously you've made it very public that you've, you're going to put this, or have put this 10 grand bet on for Billy Joe Saunders. You've also said to me that you hope you lose the money because that's the fight that you want to f fight in the future. Did you stick by them thoughts? You know, the reason I said that is because, you know, I know the Billy Joe Saunders fight is easier to, for me to make than the Canelo fight right now. Um, but, you know... Now that I've actually thought about it, and people are like, wait, you really want to? No, I don't want to lose that. I don't want to lose 10,000 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> a lot could happen in 24 hours. Yeah, you know, thinking about it, you know, he needs to be taken out of the game. He needs to, he needs to be taught a lesson by Canelo, and then he's going to come groveling for a fight with me, and then I'm going to teach him a lesson. That's what's going to happen. What did you think about him publicly saying as well that he would give Marcus Morrison 10,000 pounds to... Uh to beat you tonight. Did you see that? I didn't, no. He did. He put it on his uh, Instagram stories that he publicly said that if Marcus Morrison was to beat you, he would give Marcus Morrison £10,000. So, Saunders doesn't have any money. He, he only has money after he beats Canelo. That's the only reason why he's taking the fight, because he needs a payday. So he, he ain't got £10,000 in his bank account. Sorry. So I know he's your mate. I know he's your guy, but... Uh, he's my mate, but I know he's definitely got ten grand in his bank uh, account. Anyway, anyway, listen, congratulations. This is a new team that's formed tonight and it's a successful one from day one. So, yeah, let's see where this goes. It's all about the takeover, Coogan. All about the takeover. Take I, 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 baby. We're here to take over. 
Thank you very much, guys.